What is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. In the last video we went through and fully reassembled our D16 Y8 turbo build. We went through added our new freshly polished Z6 crankshaft, our Vitar pistons and our Eagle connecting rods. We also slapped our ported Y8 cylinder head on there with a comp cam and some Crower valve springs. Now in that video I mentioned that I would show you guys from start to finish how to degree in our new camshaft but that video was just getting to be way too long so I decided to separate it into today's video. So today I'm going to show you guys the parts that we're going to be using on the timing belt side of things but we're going to jump ahead on installing them because I showed that in the last video and we will jump right into getting this camshaft degreed. So let's get through the intro and jump right into today's video. Now that we've got our ported cylinder head on and torqued down, I want to degree in our camshaft because the cam we're using is the Comp Camps 59300, which is designed for the Z6, and we're obviously using it in a Y8. So I've got some new parts over here and some tools that we're going to be using to get this thing degreed in. So we've got a new Gates water pump, a new Gates RPM blue timing belt, an NSK timing belt tensioner, and I wanted to give the VMS Racing adjustable cam gear a shot. It's actually a pretty cool looking little piece and I think it's going to work out fine for what we need to do. We'll make sure that we get these bolts torqued down to what they recommend once we have everything dialed in. Now as far as degreeing the cam goes, we're going to be using the comp cams centerline method. Personally, I've never degreed in a cam before. With LSs, I always just go dot to dot. So this will be a new thing for me as well, but we'll get this thing figured out. We have their instructions right there that came with the camshaft. We have a degree wheel also from comp cams and then I picked up a cheap little piston stop off of Amazon and then for our dial indicators I've got an old one I've had for years and then we picked up a new one over at Harbor Freight I think we were in this whole unit for like 35 bucks so we should be good to go and it should be fine for what we need to do so let's get some of these new parts installed and then we can start figuring out how to degree in our camshaft you want to have the crank sprocket with its mark its timing mark right there lined up with the little arrow on the oil pump. Not sure how well you guys can see it, but there's an arrow that's lined up just about perfectly with that little notch. So now that we've got those two things lined up and we've got our cam sprocket facing straight up and down, we can go ahead and grab our degree wheel and we will get that mounted up and make ourselves a little pointer that can point at the degree for us. Now we can take our comp cam degree wheel, we're gonna set it on our crankshaft and then I've got two washers here that we're going to be using today that we can set just like so. Now I'm going to put my top dead center mark basically straight up and down for now. And we can go ahead and tighten this down. We've already got our crankshaft on its mark and our camshaft on the mark that we're going to be starting at. And then we can just tighten this down and we'll make our pointer come up and over and point at top dead center or zero and make sure that the wheel can't move on the crankshaft and that our pointer can't move. So let's go ahead and tighten this down. So we're gonna make a little pointer here by wrapping it around this bolt. So we've got our little pointer right here. Now we can thread it on wherever works best for us. All right, that's not gonna move. So now we can bend it where we need it to be. Now we've got our little pointer made. Just make sure that you don't bump that or move that because that will throw this whole process off. We want that to stay consistent. So for us that works, I can see it from right here. That is on zero perfectly. So now we're gonna go ahead. We've got this at top dead center or close to it. We're gonna back it off 20 degrees in the opposite of engine rotation. Then we can put our piston stop in until it touches the piston. So let's grab the piston stop. So this is all the piston stop is. It's just something that's the same thread as the spark plug. And then it's got a little centerpiece that we can thread individually of this. So we're gonna go ahead and get this down in the number one cylinder spark plug hole. 
Now we just need a long flat head screwdriver. Make sure it's gonna reach. Now we wanna turn the crankshaft in the opposite of engine rotation about 15 to 20 degrees so that we have enough room to thread in that piston stop. So we're gonna go backwards. So we went backwards 20 degrees. Now we're gonna go ahead with our long screwdriver and thread that piston stop in until it touches the top of the piston. Our piston stop is now touching the top of the piston. Now that we've got our piston stop contacting the piston, we're gonna to continue to turn the crankshaft opposite of engine rotation until the piston comes all the way back up and touches the piston stop again. Then we can make a mark at that point. So in our case, the piston came back up and it is now touching at one degree. So we're gonna make a little mark at the one degree spot. Now that we've made our mark where it touches the piston, we wanna turn the engine back in engine rotation all the way back around until it comes up and touches our piston stop one more time. So we're gonna go this way now. And right at 19 and a half, we're touching our piston stop. So we're gonna make another mark at 19 and a half. Now that we have our two points marked, we can go ahead and remove our piston stop. Now with our piston stop removed, we wanna turn the crankshaft and center it between the two marks that we made. So in our case, we're gonna to go to nine degrees. Now that we've got our degree wheel on nine degrees, we need to remove this bolt so that we can turn our degree wheel so that it is zero at this point. Be very careful that you don't turn the crankshaft while doing so because if we do, this whole process is void. So you can either A, make your own marks and keep the wheel here and just mark all new degrees, or you can loosen this bolt and turn the degree wheel a little bit. We're gonna try to turn the degree wheel using our impact gun here and hopefully not move the crankshaft. So like I said guys, we need to be very careful not to turn the crankshaft when we do this. What I did after doing this procedure was I put my piston stop back in and then redid this step all over again just to make sure that I did land on zero once again, just to verify. All right, looks like we got lucky. We're gonna make this our new zero point. Now what we wanna do is set the lash for both the intake and exhaust valves on the number one cylinder to exactly zero. We don't want them preloaded, we don't want them sloppy, we want them at zero, so just touching basically. And at this time you can zero out the lash for the number one cylinder, but set all other cylinders to the spec that you wanna run. Now we can grab our dial indicator and we wanna put it on the intake valve uh, the number one cylinder. So we're gonna use this one right here. As you guys can see, I made this little mount so that I can mount a dial indicator here because obviously everything's aluminum and my magnetic base won't stick. So I just took a piece of angle iron scrap we had, drilled a couple holes, and have this thing mounted where it's not gonna move. So now we can go ahead and get this thing set up. What is up guys, I wanted to let you know that we are now working with Max Peating Rods to get you guys a discount at checkout. So whether you need connecting rods, coilovers, or a new turbocharger, make sure to check them out and use our code capital B2B and that will save you 10% at checkout. Let's get back to today's video. Now that we've got our dial indicator set up on the number one cylinder, number one intake valve, you want that plunger as parallel to the valve movement as possible. We've got ours super close. Now that we've got our dial indicator set up to measure our valve lift, we're gonna start turning the engine in the normal direction of rotation until we get to the point where we hit max valve lift. So let's start turning this thing over. So as you can see, our dial indicator is starting to move.
right there is our max lift. So now we can go ahead and zero out our dial indicator. All right, so we've got our dial indicator zeroed out. Now we want to back up 100 thousandths, so one full rotation of the dial indicator, and then we will come back to 50. So let's go backwards. And now we can start going back forwards. And we want to be very delicate here and try to get it right on the 50 thousandths mark. So right there. Now we want to record the reading that we have at our degree wheel. So let's write that down. In our case, we came up with 72 degrees. Now that we've recorded our reading on the degree wheel at 72 degrees, we're going to start turning the engine back in the direction of normal rotation until we go past zero and we will stop at 50 once again. So let's start going. just about zero and then it's going to start going back because this is on the closing side of the valve and right there is 50 so now we can record this reading and we came up with 154 degrees so let's write that number down. If we do the math on the two numbers that I wrote down, so 72 and 154, we're gonna go ahead and add those together. 72 plus 154, that gives us 226 degrees. Now we divide that by two, and that gives us 113 degrees. So the recommended center line for our camshaft for that valve is 111 degrees. So we actually need to make a little bit of an adjustment here and then we can run through, do the same procedure again and check it again and see if we land on that 111 degrees. So you basically just keep repeating this step until you get the camshaft center line exactly where you want it. Um, it's a little overwhelming at first, but once you do it, it's actually not that bad at all. So I'm going to go through, make a little bit of an adjustment, and we will run through it again until we get it at the 111 degree mark that we are looking for. Now, like I said, in our case, we're a little bit off, so we're going to go ahead and adjust our cam gear. I'm going to back it off a little bit, and then we'll run through the same procedure again. So I need to go ahead and loosen all of these Allen head bolts. And now I'm going to take my breaker bar and try to pull a little bit out of it. Each mark here is two degrees down here. So we want to go, let's try one and a half. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and tighten these back up. Let's run through and do the same procedure again. We're gonna do the same thing we did before. We're gonna find our max lift. Which is right there. So our dial indicators stayed perfectly zero. So we found our max lift. Now we're gonna do the same thing as before. I'm gonna back the engine up so it goes a full 100 back, just like so. And now we can go 250. All right, so that's perfectly 50. Let's write down our number. Exactly 70 degrees. Now we can continue to rotate the engine in that direction until we go back to zero and now it's going to start going the other way again. And then we want to stop right at 50.
Now see what our degree is at. As you see, my degree wheel goes to 90, then starts counting backwards. So we're gonna go 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, and we've got 152. So we'll write down 152. And now we can do the math again. So we're gonna wanna take 70 plus 152 divided by two, 111. So we've got a perfect intake center line now. This thing is dialed. Um, like I said, this was my first time doing it, but it actually worked out really good and it wasn't all that bad. Once you get set up, it's actually pretty easy. So this thing is dialed. Let's tighten down all of our cam adjusting bolts so this thing can't move on us. And then we can adjust all of our lash back and we are good to go as far as degreeing in our camshaft. Now that we've got our cam degreed perfectly on point, I'm gonna go ahead and torque down the bolts for our adjustable cam gear. VMS wants you to go to 15 foot pounds, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. Now we're gonna torque down the camshaft sprocket retaining bolt to 27 foot-pounds. All right, our camshaft is dialed in and that thing is good to go. So there you have it, guys. We have got our new comp cam degreed into our D16Y8 and this thing is ready to make some boost. Now this process really isn't all that bad. It's a little overwhelming at first, but once you get the dial indicator and the degree wheel all set up, it really goes pretty quickly. So hopefully today's video could help you guys out in some way, shape, or form. As always, I appreciate you for checking out the channel. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, and check us out on all of our other social media platforms, Facebook, TikTok, and Bought to Build Official on Instagram. And we will catch you on the next one.